Girls Playground. Hooray! Hello, everybody. What's good? Welcome to the Black Lives Don't Matter podcast. I am your host, Darren Harris. And like I said, welcome. Well, 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 now that I have your attention, I know a lot of you are like, who is this guy, man? Who is this guy talking about Black Lives Don't Matter? Who is this black guy talking about black lives don't matter? Who is this dude? (laughs) Some of you are really mad about it. Well, good, good, good. I need you to be upset that black lives don't matter. I'm pissed off. Maybe we all need to be more pissed off that black lives don't matter. Maybe then finally we'll unite as a people. Maybe some of you who don't really care about anything, and I haven't seen a lot of that, who don't really care about anything will get behind this and care about this. Try and do something about it. I've been told maybe you should change the name of your podcast or it's too harsh. You're going to piss people off. How dare you do a podcast with Black Lives Don't Matter as the name. The list goes on, man. But I'm going to tell you the truth. The reason I chose the title is to actually bring light to all the times that a black life didn't matter. So that maybe we'll get a little more upset, pissed off, try to do something, you know, make something happen. Keep it happening. Some of the things I'm going to say, man, I'm just going to be honest. A lot of you are not going to like it. I'm just I just want to say that I'm not sorry about that. I'm not sorry. We need to turn the mirror in on ourselves. We need to look at ourselves because black lives can't matter to anyone else if they don't matter to us first. Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Hey folks, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Black Lives Don't Matter. I'm your host, Darren Harris. Today, I'm talking about black history since there are well the state i live in the governor called black history bullshit and as a direct result of that in florida here in florida all of the schools have got rid of ap american uh african-american studies As per Ron DeSantis, he said it holds no educational value. So our kids can't learn about their history in school anymore. Because some white kids might be offended by the stories. Last week here in Florida, there was an issue, a couple issues actually, where a parent was upset that they were learning about something that had to deal with black history. So that parent complained and that curriculum was removed from school. About a week later, there was another instance in a classroom here in Florida where the lesson was about Ruby Bridges. And because a white student felt uncomfortable, they got rid of it. They stopped class. Class had to be stopped. So they stopped class because the little white person didn't want to feel embarrassed about what her her race did to another little child, to a little child, grown-ass men. So let me get this straight. White people can talk as much as they want to about things that hurt black people, cause black people discomfort. But we can't learn about things that actually happened. Because of the 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 dumbass governor in this state. Yeah, and I called you a dumbass. I hope you listen, bro. I really do. I hope I hope that the governor of Florida decides to listen to my podcast one day. Because I'd like to sit down with this motherfucker in person, really, honestly. I'd like to sit down with him in person and ask him what's irrelevant or what 
what about black history holds no value? Because I'll tell you what, if it wasn't for black people, there would be no fucking United States of America. You wouldn't have a country if it wasn't for black people. You motherfuckers didn't do anything for 400 years. You didn't do anything. But now, legislation in Florida doesn't want you to learn about any of that. So, we're at a dead end here in Florida because all of his constituents, of course, they're all Republicans and they all suck his ass. So, of course, they're all going to vote with him. So, we are at a, a brick wall, a dead end, right? Wrong. And I'm going to tell you why it's wrong. It's right. It, it can be right if we don't do the right thing. But this is how we do the right thing, folks. Okay? This is how we do the right thing. If we can't learn about black history or our history in school, if we can't learn about black history in school, then I'm leaving it up and I am compelling all the black filmmakers, all the black writers, stop making bullshit science, bullshit fiction. Start writing about actual black history. Start making movies about what actually happened because Ron DeSantis does not own the movie industry. He don't own Netflix. He don't own HBO Max. None of that shit. He don't own none of that shit. He don't own Hulu, not Amazon Prime. So we need to start making black movies, real black movies. I'm not talking about some fiction shit, you know, some love and bass. That's all good. That's that's great. You know, what I mean, Boys in the Hood. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 all good. You know, what I mean, but we need to start making movies about black heroes. Like black heroes relevance Robert Smalls if you don't know who Robert Smalls was Robert Smalls was a man that was born into slavery but he escaped slavery by taking over a confederate ship in the south taking over a confederate ship stopped pick up picked up his wife and kids and some other slaves and sailed them to the north which he lowered the Confederate flag and raised a white flag of surrender. The Union Navy, they approached the ship and they found out what happened. And man, this guy was re rewarded with command of the very ship that he stole. Now, before that, he had command of another ship. And he took heavy damages on that ship. He, he, he rocked the house with that ship, but he took heavy damages on that ship and eventually that ship sank. So what they did is they gave him command of the ship that he stole, effectively making him the first black ship captain, military ship captain in America. Robert Smalls. He was also a businessman. And not only was he a businessman after the Civil War, he served three terms in Congress. Non-consecutive, but he served three terms in Congress. Got elected three different times. A black man in South Carolina. We need to write. Where's the movie about this guy? Huh? Where's the movie about Robert Smalls? Where is this movie? Black filmmakers, we need to start doing adaptations. We need to start making adaptations, historically accurate adaptations of our stories, of our history. You don't need a teacher or a classroom to learn black history. You just need a desire. That's all you need to learn black history. Black history is very important. It is extremely rich. And fuck Ron DeSantis for saying otherwise. And I'll tell you in your fucking face, bruh. Simple as that. I'll tell you right in your fucking face. 
Just like the dude told you during COVID. I love that guy. Whoever that dude is, he's my fucking hero because he bust in the press conference and called you a straight liar to your face because you are. You're a poor quality human. You are a poor quality human. Robert Smalls. Now that's that now that's a real ass man. That's a real nigga right there. That's a real motherfucker right there, man. Stole a ship, went and got his family and friends, and then kept sailing. And then came back and laid this smack down on them motherfuckers, man. Laid this smack down on them. Kept laying the smack down on him. He did other shit too. He went to, uh, he was in Philadelphia and he was uh, discriminated against on public transportation. So you know what he did? He, 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 he organized a boycott. He organized a boycott of the public transportation system in Philadelphia. And you know what they did? They ended that bullshit. They ended the segregation because of Robert Smalls. He did great stuff. And not only did he do that, he bought, he bought the house that he was enslaved in. It's actually the house that he had when he died. And then not, not only that, not only that, and this is how real this motherfucker was because he a better man than me because I don't know if I could have done this. He let the widow of the man who enslaved him live in his house until she died. That is a real motherfucker right there. That's a piece of history, y'all. That's a piece of real ass history that Mr. DeSantis doesn't want you to know. And not only Mr. DeSantis, other Republican states, everybody's rallying behind this motherfucker. But we could stop this, y'all. We could stop this. Not just black people, but black people in this country, Chinese Americans, Indians in this country, Native Americans in this country. And even white folks in this country who are tired of this bullshit. We need to stand up. Motherfuckers like this need to be put out of office. His job is to serve the citizens of the state that he governs. But he clearly does not want to serve us. And in the Constitution, it says if, if these people are not serving the people then the people have a right to revolt. That's in the Constitution. Now, I'm not inciting riots or any of that, but I'm just letting y'all know there's some shit that we need to start looking at in the Constitution. Now, yeah, the Constitution was written, but it was, it was written, but it wasn't written with us in mind. Well, you know what? That was a long-ass time ago, and now today the Constitution stands for everybody. Everybody. So, yes, motherfucker, yes, this is my own personal revolt against the shit that's going on here in the state of Florida. This is my own personal stand up for the shit that's going on here in Florida. And anybody who listens to this podcast, please share it with everyone. Share it with everybody black. Share it with everybody who sympathizes with what we are going through. Share it with everybody who, who, who thinks that what's going on in the state of Florida is wrong. Share this podcast. OK, share black lives don't matter. You got to share it. We got to get it out there. We got to make it a viral thing. We got to get this across the country, not just here in the state of Florida, not just Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, the entire country. We need to get these messages across to the entire to the entire company. I want John Singleton, the dude who made Boys in Hood. Yo, John, my man, we need a movie about Robert Smalls, homie. You hear me? You know what I'm saying? We, we need that. We need that because this is the only way that we are going to, in the future, be able to learn about, especially in states, you know, in, in red states. This is the only way that we're going to learn, be able to learn about our actual history without them whitewashing it or sweeping it away or making them seem like making it seem like they were this this pristine, uh, upstanding culture of people because they weren't. They were murderers. They were murderers. And these motherfuckers are down here protecting all these ideologies. Like I said in my last podcast, there are Confederate monuments everywhere. I mean, I, I live, I live, I live 
about 15 miles, 15 to 20 miles from the Olusti battlefield, which is the battlefield where the Confederates won, won, we won, we won down here, we won so we could keep our niggers. And they celebrate that shit to this day. They still celebrating that shit. And that, Mr. DeSantis, is fucking offensive. Not learning about Ruby Bridges and the bullshit your people did. That's not offensive. That's, that's real. So my thing is this. My thing is this. All the black school children out there, everybody who goes to school, whether it be preschool or college, I don't give a fuck what it is. What needs to start happening is when they start talking about shit that makes you uncomfortable, stand up and say, that makes me uncomfortable. And see what happens. See if they stop the lesson. See if they take the curriculum out of school because you're offended. And if you're offended and they don't do anything about it, shout it from the fucking mountaintops because it's wrong. It is wrong. It is wrong in every facet. American, black, it's part of American history. It's a part of the history of this country, regardless of how heinous it was. But the reason you pass, because you don't want your kids to feel guilty. Well, motherfucker, they should feel guilty. They should feel guilty as fuck. Now, they didn't do anything. And let me rephrase that. They shouldn't feel guilty. That's not the word I was looking for. They should feel embarrassed. They should feel embarrassed because it, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. How do you think we felt? How do you think Ruby Bridges felt when she was just trying to go to school? How do you think she felt? But she had her held up high. She had her held her head up high and marched her ass right into school every fucking day. Regardless, to get her education. And she's still here, believe it or not. But I mean, I mean, she's still here. That queen is still here. That lady paved the way for so many of us. But we are not concerned with that. We want action. We want justice. We want this and that. But instead of going to get action and justice, we're going to Mexico to get the BBL. Instead of action and justice, we're going down to the beauty supply shop to put a bunch of fake hair in our heads. That's the shit that we worry about. They made that. They constructed that. They have stripped us. We have to realize that. We have to start understanding that we have been stripped and are being stripped of everything that defines us. Our culture is being targeted. Our culture is being attacked. Our ancestors are being disrespected. They spinning over in their graves right now at the shit that's going on and the shit that we're doing about it. Because... Honestly, there's only a few of us really doing anything about it. The rest of us don't give a fuck. The rest of us want to sell drugs. We want to um, we want to be Instagram models. Um, we're constantly chasing the bag. All kinds of dumbass shit as opposed to standing up for black people. Standing up to preserve the legacy of black people. We ain't doing it. We're doing a shitty job at it. That's exactly what we're doing. We're doing a shitty job at preserving our legacy. And it's it's going right down the drain. You see it spiraling on down the drain? It's going down the fucking drain, y'all. Because we aren't doing anything about it. Because we aren't worried about it. We're not worried about it. We're not worried about it. And we're falling into the trap that, once again, that they have set for us. And even in the media... Even in the media, I've said this before, even in the media, you see a whole bunch of commercials where you have this white head of household and then you have the black wife and the kids or the Latin wife and the kids or the Asian wife and the kids or the Indian wife and the kids. But it's always white male head of household. And that's what you're starting to see now. Everybody is 
every it's starting to it's starting to look at the white male as their lifeline, as their savior. I've seen memes that say, get you a white man because white men know how to save money. White men know how to take care of things. White, no, they don't. No, they fucking don't. They just like every other fucking man out here. As a matter of fact, some of them are worse because they have privilege. They have privilege. And they flex that privilege every time they fucking can. And we lay right down for it every time. Well, you know what? I'm tired of laying the fuck down. I'm tired of laying down for these motherfuckers. I really am. And, and don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about the Caucasian folks that understand what we've gone through. The Caucasian folks that have open minds. The white folks that 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 understand the plight that's going on in this country. I'm not talking about those folks. I'm talking about these gun toting tobacco chewing fucking right wing ass super right wing ass racist narcissistic bigot ass motherfuckers that's who i'm talking about and if you listening to this yeah i'm talking to you I'm talking right to you I'm talking right at your motherfucking ass because you ain't no better than nobody man you ain't better than nobody. Nobody, nobody, nobody is better than anybody. Really, we all the same. I punch you in the fucking mouth, you bleed. You punch me in the mouth, I bleed too. We the same motherfucking people, man. We just got dropped off in different spots. But you think because you got blue eyes and blonde hair and your wife, your wife got small fucking waist and big titties. And look at what the fuck they trying to do. All these bitches is getting lip implants and trying to get fat asses and all kind of shit to look like a black woman. They want to wear box braids and all kind of shit like that. Stealing, hijacking culture because that's all they fucking do. They don't have any culture of their own. They steal their they steal their culture from every other culture around the world. They make it their own. They butcher it. And then they're called visionaries. Black chick wear box braids, she hood. White chick wear box braids, she's brave. She's a visionary. Fuck that bitch. Fuck that bitch. And fuck everybody with that ideology. Fuck everybody with that mode of thinking. You see, folks, I am very, very, extremely, extremely pro-black. I am not anti-white. Believe it or not. I am not anti-white. I am anti-racism. I am anti-racism. I'm anti-racist. I'm anti-bigot. I'm anti-narcissist. I'm anti-all of that shit. Anything that makes you think that you're better than someone, I'm against it. Anything. I don't care what it is. My hair is straight. Your hair is kinky. I don't give a fuck. That don't mean you're better than me. My eyes are blue and yours are brown. I don't give a fuck. I can still see. Simple as that. I don't give a fuck. There's a lot of shit happening to us, folks. There's a lot of shit happening to black folks, and we are turning a blind eye to it because of social media. And I'm not trying to get people to get off social media. I'm on social media. I use social media to help pro promote my podcast, but it shouldn't be the thing that governs our life. It damn sure shouldn't be. We shouldn't be having our fucking, I look at my, my and I know we all have it. I look at my usage on my telephone and it used to be I spent like five hours a day on social media. I'm like, what? Five hours just checking? Yeah, five fucking hours a day. Scrolling and scrolling and looking at this and scrolling and, you know, liking, you know, motivational memes, but with, still ain't got no fucking motivation to do nothing. We need to get up, black people. We need to get up off the ground. We've been knocked to the floor. We've been knocked to the floor. We are down and we are being kicked while we are down and not only are the white folks kicking us we're kicking ourselves while we are already down we got to get up we have got to get up we got to get up we got to we got to get our focus back we got to put that mouthpiece back on we got to cinch up our gloves pull up our fucking trunks and get the fuck back in the middle of the ring and fight with everything you got. Fight with every ounce of strength in your body. Otherwise, you're just a fucking coward. 
Otherwise, you're just a coward. All you motherfuckers out here hustling, thinking that you're the man because you hustle and got a few thousand dollars in your pocket. What you doing for black people, bro? What are you doing for black people? I don't give a fuck how much money is in your bag. I don't give a fuck how smooth you are on your D. I don't give a fuck. What the fuck are you doing for black people? What you doing for black people other than giving us a bad name? You know what I'm saying? Other than making, justifying what motherfuckers say about us. What the fuck are you doing? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, I don't want to go to school. I'm going to go out here and hustle. Oh, I don't want to go do this because it's too hard. I'm going to go out here and hustle. Man, fuck that. Don't you hustle at school, motherfucker. Why don't you hustle at church? Why don't you hustle telling other black youth about the history of black people? Somewhere along the lines, we have lost ourselves. We have lost ourselves. We lost ourselves to ourselves. And now what's happening is they killing us, but they set it on cruise control because now we killing us. Gentlemen like Robert Smalls. That's who we all need to strive to be. Somebody who is a champion for black people, black issues and black rights. Somebody who is a champion for our ancestors and our elders. Are you that champion? Do you care enough to shoulder up some of this responsibility? Because it really is. It's on all of us. It's not going. It can't be just me. Can't be just me. It's got to be all of us. It's got to be everybody. It's got to be every single voice. Every single voice. Every one of us. Our children. Our parents. Grandparents. It's got to be everybody's voice. It's got to be everybody, y'all. I mean, I love my people so much, but I despise the fact that we cannot organize together to make shit happen. We are always stepping on each other's necks to get in front of each other. No other race does that but us. We need to stop. We need to adapt the ideologies of the Latins. We need to adapt the ideologies of the Arabs. They come over with their families and their family unit is the first and foremost. Our family units have been broken up. Look around, y'all. Look around. We need our family units back. That's where our strength lies, is in family. That's where our strength lies, is in our family. We've got to stand up. We've got to be stronger. We have got to be more militant. We have got to be more focused. We can't lay down for it. We can't sit up and watch this shit happen because that's exactly what happened in Florida. We just sat up and watched Ron DeSantis pass all this bullshit powerlessly. We need more politicians. We need, like I've said this before, we need more black politicians. Like I said, this is what needs to happen. Any uh, presidential run, uh, any, anything, any, I don't care what it is, uh, running for mayor, uh, city comptroller, uh, I, don't, I don't care what it is. But whatever we're running for, there needs to be more than one black person running. There needs to be eight black people running for this position. Every time a white man says, oh, I'm running for city council. Eight of us need to stand up and go, oh, us too. And pepper in a couple of Asians and a few Latins. Give some variety because right now we don't have any variety. There's no variety. There's no variety. There's only white there's only white and like i said i'm not down on white folks but i'm sure sick as a, sick to death of everything being catered to them you know i'm sick to death me and my wife tried to buy a house a couple of years ago and we put in an offer on this house and we were the first ones to put an offer in on the house but a white lady after we did put an offer in on the house same same offer they gave the house to her. We put our offer in first. They gave the house to her. Both of us are upstanding. We both make decent money. But they gave it to a single white lady as opposed to a black and Hispanic couple. And as I looked around the neighborhood, of course, all you see is white folks and white faces and Everybody out in their yard waving at each other and 
I guess they didn't want to wave at us. It's sad, folks. It's a shame. But we have to stop marching. Because I'm going to tell you straight up, marching don't do shit. Us marching, it is, it's just us, us, it's us working out. It's us walking around in a fucking circle, working out, burning some fucking calories. That's all it is because it never gets anything done. We march and then we, revolt, we revert right back to the same old bullshit of TikToking and getting our hair and nails done. And girl, I'm trying to get this bag. Right on back to that shit. When are we going to realize, man? When are, when are we going to realize that, that we are beautiful people? And sisters, I'm going to tell you, you're beautiful without fake nails. You're beautiful without fake hair. You're beautiful without fake glasses. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful first and foremost because you're black. The world came from a black woman. We need to honor that. We need to fight as hard as we can to protect our legacy. To solidify ourselves here as a part of this country. Us, the Chinese, the Latins, the natives, all of us. We need to stand up. And we need to tell white people that this is enough. We are tired of your policies. We are tired of you governing us because you don't care for us. So something's got to change. So. Robert Smalls, look it up, y'all. Look it up. And any filmmakers that are out there, there's a bunch of stories that we need to have made. We need the story of Ruby Bridges. We need that whole story. You know what I'm saying? We need Rosa Parks. We need a, a brand new adaptation of Rosa Parks. I, hats off to Will Smith for Emancipation because that shit right there, motherfuckers need to watch it. Motherfuckers need to watch it. It's the most accurate depiction of slavery I've ever seen in any movie in my life. The most accurate, the most real depiction of slavery. And that man too, the man that he played, hero. Straight up hero. He got his movie. We need more of them. We need more of these movies because these are how we protect our legacy. This is how we educate our children or keep our children's, our culture in the forefront of our children's minds so we do not lose our heritage. We do not lose our dignity and respect. We do not lose the hard work that our ancestors put in for 400 years. Do better, black people. Do better. We have to do better. We have to do better because black lives in this country right now, especially in the state of Florida, black lives don't matter. Black lives don't matter here. Because if they did, then we wouldn't need a movement. Now would we? I'm Darren Harris, folks. This has been Black Lives Don't Matter. Peace. Don't let biased algorithms or degree screens or exclusive professional networks or stereotypes. Don't let anything keep you from discovering the half of the workforce who are stars. Workers skilled through alternative routes rather than a bachelor's degree. It's time to tear the paper ceiling and see the stars beyond it. Find out how you can make stars part of your talent strategy at tearthepaperceiling.org. Brought to you by Opportunity at Work and the Ad Council.